haven't screened online, so this will be available for anyone to recap or look at later on if you wish. And we can begin. So I'll go over here. So thanks everyone for coming to uh, my nice little all space event. I'm going to go walk through about how to take or create your own event, exactly setting your stage and get things going. This current time and the fact that uh, you know, we're all isolated, we're all locked. I do fully apologize in advance, even on my wife come in as they're still cooking dinner. So if you hear anything else, it's not me, it's my family. Oh, it's, it's good for them. This is the kind of thing that they're in work meetings or personal meetings. Yeah, we're going to have these kind of... So, a few things before we get started. So, obviously, this is, you know, a virtual online event. You know, most people, if you have an in-person group or an in-person event, you know, you, you'll know something for them to people or to run up and down on the stage or basically wave your hands around the place. So, ask you to be nice to fellow guests, you know, find a nice seat, sit down, let's enjoy the show. Um, as we say above the stage here, so previously reserve questions for the end. I will be activating some of these features, so if everyone has to raise their hand to ask a question, a question at the end, and then just save it to there. And above, have fun, enjoy the space. You know, we are, we're all isolated at the moment, we're all not getting about, not seeing people. These 2D events where we're just seeing people flat on the screen, and these kind of more immersive VR environments. Are more together, more in person. You are, you are people standing in front of me or floating on their seats. That's an interesting one. So let's get on. So, you've all come here to Alter Space. So, Alter is a great space. Let's move over here out of the way so you can see the slides. So, Alter is a great meeting place. It's a, a fantastic, immersive platform and offers. A lot of rich spaces and has a lot of different kind of themes and places to visit. So, you know, this is like the beast show environment I've set up and I've customized it a little bit. And you can have, you know, events for almost up to 80 people, but depending on the actual full space you do. You know, if you have a small room, you can have less people. Large rooms can have up to about a matter of large occupancies. But if you do find yourself having a larger meeting or a larger space, then you can just lots of spaces and they'll actually expand the amount of in a room and they'll work with you about a guide if you're going to expecting a really large event. But for those small lots of movies, which you'll find most of the spaces are fine. Um, one really good, some of you have found out the fact that we're both VR. I'm here today on Oculus Quest, so I've got hands and I can work. Obviously, they can also use a, a standard D client, so you can actually use your using map or looking around and work in the space. So it's open to all. And there's even like a, a mobile client for Android it on your phone if you wish to look through. Now, one of the really best things that I find about all spaces is this. And I realize I've not got my laser pointer. Where's my laser pointer? There we go. But as if by magic, I can laser. So that last one is it's free. This will not charge you anything for the using this, and that's both now and in the future, as far as I'm aware. No matter how big your event is, how small your event is, all space will always be free. And this even includes some of the other features that they have. They're having a whole different. You can build your own spaces, and then you can upload those to all. It's all free. I highly recommend if you're interested in building, you should go to some of the developer events as well. But I digress. So, obviously, here we are. This is one of the other spaces now. This is where I've run this presentation last. So, this is like the presentation. Uh, you have a standard set of desks, your standard presentation desk. I'm running repeats of this event, so, whole new room space. And it's, this literally just took me about setting it up, and then and that's it. Everything's there. You have all seats you're going to do, but also there are a lot of places where you can actually have. So you can have more podcasting setting room, gaming or party chat room. And when you're browsing up the space and looking into the world, you'll see even more expansive places, including a huge game room where you can go and play dark, lots of other fun things. So it doesn't have to be a, a presentation. It could just be a meeting up. So 
what are most or more probably what we're not going to us. So we're going to go to how you can replicate what I've produced here. So how you very own an event. <clears throat> What you need to do to prepare your space, how you can cost me which I wish to have it, and the more important thing is then how to run that meeting, how you need to do the presentations, how is the audience, and remembering. Thank you, Drew, for meeting the audience. <laughs> um, for running the meeting, and also then how to actually. You manage the presenter who, if someone's seeking your event with them, to make sure they got the best presentation possible. And lastly, we're going to copy if you want to record the event. So, as I'm actually doing today, if you want to stream it, you can actually do that as well. Uh, a lot of these things you can just manage them yourselves. So, you're here, you, you've got an idea, you want to run a meeting, you want to just want to get people into a space and start talking. How can we get on with that? So, is that you know all your meetings set up you can do it but to be honest it's better to actually do it on the website you'll go to the website and you'll create and that's going to either be in the future at a scheduled day and time basically start now it's up to you you give it some basic details i basically say you know what's my event name give it a description when you want to start if it's going to start in the future Category, which basically just helps you when you're looking for different events, you can search by category if you were, and also then whether this is a public or a private event. So private, only people can get into the event. Public, anyone can get it on time and just start harassing everyone. Um, and also tips and tricks about if you're doing a large event, so your place is up, you simply contact the whole space team, so support link on the website, and they'll come along and help you the event. Fantastic at helping you in just questions and answer whatever you need to know about your event. Now, what I actually realised for this event is that in this description, you can go if you know Markdown or basically it's a it's a custom font. You can customise how your page looks. So instead of being a wall of event description, you can put images in there. You can actually put more your headings. Very really simple, and it can make it look a bit better than just. Your standard wall of text. Once you try to set up the basics, then you get to choose what's what you get out of the box. So this is no effort, no start up. You can just choose. These spaces are all set up and all because obviously all space is meant to go from the smallest headset to the largest headset. You can have it on a quest or on an Oculus Go up to like a big desktop video and anything else you want to set up on. And all of these will work in all of them, but to work that way. So whether you're in a room or like, you know, party event uh, or any pick, choose, that's it. And you don't have to worry about it. You can always change it, you change your mind later if you follow the event. So if you don't like it well, once you're in, you can go to it and try it again. Now, when we are doing a meeting like this, uh, I have a few standby like Jesse over there. I've got <laughs> Drew just to come along and say hi. And... In this, though, I can actually give people different roles. So, you know, organizers are not necessarily a one man band, but I can learn to help me out. But whether also hosts, might, whether or not there are actually a, just here to moderate, to know how people are going, manage the audience, and how they're doing. There can be a musical performance, so that's just basically a, a little bot, which is a bit like my, who just is playing music. It's just our pilot, which is like my cameraman. Uh, if a decade presenter who's giving a speech or actually doing a talk, then they can give a and they've got special privileges, but they can't manage the audience. Terraform, which basically means I can manipulate this work and change it how I wish. People who give that ability to, because there's a start ripping this out or putting new things in just for fun. Depends on your kind of event and what you want to do. And what you recommend is that a good, a good event. Have at least a long ago, uh, or someone come along who can help us to manage customer audience to customer the question. If you're doing this talk like this, it can quite get manage both the audience and also your event. Little things to try. So, once you have got it set it up, here's now, now I won't show you your vault space. You know, it's a bit too much of an inception thing there. But this is basically a pre-recorded session of what I'm creating my own event. 
giving it a, a name, giving it a description. I'm going to set uh, an end time. Now, this is also how it is, so you can actually use that to manage. But you can also type into this field. So I can set my, set my system at my start time. And all I'm going to typically do is then copy and then paste it in the end time and add, add it to it. Out. So I'll have however long your event, which is a lot easier. There's a lot of flexibility to you. can select what one of the categories to play around with. Which is the aid discovery for public events, setting public and private, and choosing your space. I'm going, to get, I'm going to set up my nice spaces in there. What you can also then do is assign the tools, and then there's tons of other little to basically feature or enhance the handle of what your event will look like. But once you've set it, you then can go back and then edit your space. So I'll click edit, there we go. And I can start adding. Other if there are people I like, do not want to attend my follow up with, I can add them as a block of users as if it were really wish. I've not had to do that like, in all the time I've been here. It's very friendly, everyone's very happy, and they all just want to like, get along. And I like to say that you can change if you really weren't really happy with what you chose to be completely up to you. You did just follow the events running. Not obvious. So, here we go, we've gone up to the website, we've set up our spectrum, right, what then can we do with it? So obviously, nice blank spaces is great, I'm not, but the thing is then every event looks the same. And then a lot of people want to put their own in information, uh, there are little settings in the spectrum, and it's completely up to you about what you want to do. Basically, you can actually enter and enable world editing. Now, this is available to anyone who's, who's actually meant to like a super user who could do anything, and then anyone else who's being able to begin the, the terraformer of it, so they can actually add content and change it in the space. Once it's basically enable that setting, you'll then get a hold of what this is, this, and this is basically called the World Editor Toolbox. What this does is it basically gives you full access to your space, all the objects, so all this all the seating, the little spy components up over here, but the hat generation stands, and let's actually customize it. Now, here we start to start adding different elements to your scene or what you want to do to custom. And these form into several different, several different categories. Ugh. So basically, you're going to get over the world editor, make sure your yeah, editing mode is enabled. So actually, it shows you can actually add stuff to the scene. You're then going to choose what objects you are. Now, is that about photos? Photos when you my set for photos to be available in your space. This image you put over here of myself. Basically, you need to upload to the alt space website before you went to. Because basically, you're having all your assets and they're ready that your data can use to create your event and how you want to play it around. And see what, and then put them into your space. Now, the kind of things we've got, we've got kits, which is used basically does us collection, so we can be used. They're usually themed or different styles, different, and you can then place them around your scene however you want. We've got STK, like the wear a hat op option over here, which basically gives us a custom that we can use to actually then manipulate or change your character, change your environment, the little fun things. If you look around some of the different worlds, you'll see things like the basketballs and things like that, which you can program. So these basically allow you to change the sky at night to look around your event. So if you want to do event at night, and in the day, if you want a nice funky jazzy scene, you can do all that. And then obviously then you've got your photos and the basics. And those are just the, as they sell, basic things. So there's cubes, boxes, little banners and things you put up that put them on your scene. Go and choose what you want to use. So when you're editing your space, feel a lot of tips and tricks. So one, is this little lock rotation option. Now, what that will do is that when you put content into this, it'll either move based upon the way you're looking, or you can get it to sell, so you can just place it there. This is coming down to trial and error about what you need to do, and we'll show you that in a bit. The other one is case of it is the edit mode. So when the, when you, you all automatically, by default, you can fly, which is move around the space, move around in a little nook and cranny, be aware, once you turn editing, you'll then not be flying, and if you're off the edge of the building, you'll fall into the street. 
but what he put on the space lane, picks you up and puts you back to the space basically. So anyway, it's one of those things where it takes practice. You're just going to walk around, put some things around, eventually you'll get used to how it works. Because obviously, online 2D design, you're placing the you're going to rotate it, you're going to manipulate it, you're going to move it. And there's different this, but basically you're just going to play with it. Again, also, if you want any photos, any branding, any little extra things, so like this picture up here, you need to upload those on the website first, and then they'll be fully used, utilized by actually placing them in the scene over here. So, let's see this in action. No, 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 no. So, here's my event. I've actually come back to the website here, so I'm going to go to the, over here. And I'm going to go to the photo section, loading my photos. Now, this is very, very easy. It is a case of go to here, choose a photo, upload it. Go on. That means the photos are now in your Octopus account. You can just remove them, change them, whatever you wish. Whatever is in here, when you actually inside Alt Space, it is then available for you in Alt Space. Go on, upload. And there we go. So you can have uploaded this picture here, which is just being used on this presentation rack. Then when we come back into our space, and we go to our lovely space, um, find, this, find, find the nice little event I created earlier, jump in, do a little dance while we wait for our space to start. It's nice and nice, nice little movie you see when we can actually see it going in. Once we've made my space there, go to the actual the world editor, which you'll see now on the bottom right. I'm going to go here. And now this is, uh, this is uh, I spent a few minutes here to just playing around with what we mean by placement, the things will work. So you're going to go around, enable the world editor in your settings up. And then once we launch it, we've got all the different things to choose from. So we've got the basics, we've got the label, brow, scar boxes. Play around with the content and you'll see how the space builds and goes ahead. Now we can go to some my section, you can go to photos, so that I've created earlier. Any photos you've taken in the space of a bar, you've actually got a camera, so you can take photos and see, and even selfie. And once you place placing the scene down, you can zoom in, zoom out, to so basically make it a larger draw, so you move it around. And you can see at the moment that this is actually essentially mode, which means it won't move with how I look. And then I'm going to the world editor, I'm going to disable the rotation lock. And now, wherever I look, the move rotated and moved to the way I'm looking. Now, this does take a lot of practice to get it right. And to take account of top is that when you're moving and replacing the scene, you almost need to worry about what we call clipping. That basically means when your end of the scene is going to be behind the world. So if I move this now and I move it to beyond the wall, then I move it around. Well, not, I'm just going to keep moving. I'm just going to keep moving around. You can see that. Okay, I'm going to move, I'm place it. I'm just away from the wall. And I'm flying, so I can move it up and down. Kick it up again. It's going to rotate. And you can see here the in and out of the wall. Now, this is one thing to be really careful: is that when you're placing it, if you place things to another piece of wall, then it will snub from certain angles. So when you place it with the way it is, then move around, check it out. Make sure it's facing it appropriately. When I was playing with this, okay, so I couldn't find a good way. Also, I simply moved it to another one. It was just as easy. It's where I want. Where I want. Make sure you're back. And um, there we go. I'm happy. There we go. That's, it's blocking over the entire door frame, but if it works not nicely. So a lot of what you can do with, with the way actually placing the objects is simply trial and error. Just, Place, try, move, look around, make sure you can see it from up, make sure it's not embedded in something. Especially if you use things like the intro, wear a hat, or all the rest of the cocoa components, make sure that the fact that the people can access it from where they are. So, we've got, we've got our event, we've got our space, we're all set up, ready for the big day. Um, if you're running a presentation like this one, there's several, lots, several different options you can use for actually creating it. If you just don't need a presentation, you just need a stage. And you can let the presentations access the stage, the tools, which we'll go through in a bit. 
give you access of who can access it. So not everyone can sort of run in. And if you're doing slides, there's a couple of different options. You can use Google Slides, which is good for little static images or basic images. Or you can use things like slides.com, which is what I'm using today. Because this also allows me to embed videos. It's a little bit more performance and also gives me tools so that I can actually alter the presentation from other devices or even have, even have another presenter with me who's moving the slides on for me to mess around with it. Um, but basically, ah, I click, apologies, I clicked on something and a big window is now in my view. <laughs> Where's my cloud? Uh, oh, no, no, I'm going to have to move. Oh, this is not, not happened before. Let me close that. Close. Oh, well. Ah. There we go. I do apologize for that. Don't click on things randomly. Um, and also, you can, basically, any browser-based presentation system will work. Um, these things are, are always being constantly updated, not specifically based to the state of play today. Now, one interesting thing is the fact that if you if you like writing your presentations in a PowerPoint, both with Google Slides and, and Slides.com, both it's for importing your slides. But there's a little trick is that once you've imported them, check them. Because sometimes that importing doesn't come out right. And something sometimes different slides and things are missed and things can happen. So when you're presenting, you've got several different presentation options. Quite a few spaces have a big presentation screen here, which allows you basically then have a browser control, which then it acts like any other web browser. You can control it from within the scene. Alternatively, and what did you do that? Basically, it's got an address bar, you type it in, and, and that's it, goes forward. Um, and also with the fact that when, for, when you're setting your display, there is actually an option, which I'll show you in a, show in a video, the place to actually say, what is the URL that should be on that presentation when it begins? So that means that your event space is always set up in before the presenter turns up, which is a good little thing to do in advance when things get ready. Now, the other way to use it is the fact that if you notice, you know, everyone's alt space toolbar on your bottom left, you'll have an icon on the top left, which is basically the browser's icon, as shown here. Click on that, brings up your own personal browser, and then you can actually just browse the page and get it ready. And then what you can do is, once you've got your page ready, now all specs, make sure you've got it ready. You can hit this broadcast button. That's okay here. If you're in your just here today, because you can't see this space, but you can play in the room. You have this broadcast option. And what this does is it gives us a few different options of a way to actually send what we can see to the screen. Now we can have the beam images, which means that what you see in your browser gets sent to the screen. Now, I stress this is only really good for actual images or static presentations. If you do videos this way, it'll be really choppy because it's sending it from your browser to the screen. The other thing you do with the URLs. Now, what this will do is that if, once you've typed in the address and you've got it there, it'll take the URL in your browser, close your browser, and then pop up on the big screen. And it doesn't mean you lose any kind of control over it once it's started. So a couple of things to be aware of. And then depending on the spaces that you'll either have an option to put on the wall, or just take your browser and place it into the actual scene for you to use. This is up to you. Other things around is the fact that you'll have these things, these touch boards, and these more like dedicated services where you basically can actually just show an image, or it can show a video, or it can show something else. So there's a few things you can actually place in the scene to make it yours. You can simply just put, as I showed you before, just put pictures up. But make sure the fact that if you are doing photos, you upload them in advance. But also, you can't do it while you're in this place. So, here we go again. We'll walk through. I'm going to turn off edit mode, and I can see I'm falling, falling to the sky. So, if you are, I have tested it. If you're off the edge of a build, turn off edit mode, you will fall to the ground. Or ultimately, it will pick you back up again. So, over here on my presentation screen, I've got the browser icon, which I can own there. This demo is doing it on a PC, so it's a lot easier than your keyboard. Uh, generally, when I was setting it, it was just by my mouse because it's a lot easier. And then I'll browse to whichever address I want. Alternatively, and then obviously, if you're using like slides to come, you can basically take your URL from your slide deck, paste it into the actual address bar up and running 
There's simply one way to get around it. So alternatively, also we can use the browser option. So I'll click the browser option. So there we go. It's so much easier to actually show you as I'm doing it, but we can do pre record here. But then clicking the browser, you'll see for yourself, you go in there. Now, what's just obviously you have to make sure that what you're setting in here, sending it to a screen, is what you want to show. You can't really change afterwards, so it's very well. So for here, I'm going to make something to show beaming images and sync URLs. So when you click sync URLs, what will happen? There's a wall, click OK. My browser is going to close the screen. It's now showing what I had in the browsers at that time when I started to do it. But obviously, then any control is either remotely in itself if it's supported. Alternatively, I can go back in again. And this time, we'll actually do beaming images. Now, this is useful if you've got static content and you want to more control your presentation once it's running. So now my browser window stays open, all the presenter can see it. You all can't see it. Leave it minimum browser where I want to be. And then I can control my browser and anything I should see and show on that window is on the big presentations. It's a nice full of control over what's going on. And you can do that way. Right, again, a lot of it's down to personal preference. What do you prefer? How do you prefer to run your presentation and what you want to run with it? So, we've got our speaker lined up. He's going to come on stage. We've got our room. It's all set up. Our event is out. And we're ready to run our event. Look at that. I'm hitting buttons and nothing is happening. There we go. So, like I did with the to here today, is the fact that most people are not used to virtual presentations. We're used to physical events. We go to there, how to behave, we know how to talk to people, we know how to stand, and we know how sit. Usually, there's usually seating at these events. But that's an event where everything is new. So, a lot of things are the same when you use a group on your event and you want to take it into a virtual. Um, some things are different. Obviously, scheduling. You know, once you should create an event, you're able to send out the invites to your event to whoever, whether you're broadcasting at Altspace or whether you're using like Meetup or Eventbrite or some other tool or service. You get the, get the URL from the meeting from Altspace by using the share URL, simply just copying the address for it. And then craft a welcome mail like you would have seen on the actual entryway for this event, giving them directions to where it is. As a lot of people are still new to our space, you know, give them some directions about how to install our space and get it set up. Advise them very much so to actually go and ask, go through the tutorial to make sure the fact that we've had a few people turn up to events and then they've got the tutorial as the start of the event. You have to finish that tutorial before you can actually watch it realistically to make sure that people are advised in advance, you know, go through, know the basic. You also say the fact that when you're sending out the invite for your event to all your user group people, Ask them to also go to the website, register interest for the event. This means it makes it a lot easier once you're in our space to then find the event you want that you're going to do. And then that way you can easily just pop up the headset on navigating rather than trying to search for it or look for the times, especially if it's a private event. And the other thing is case of as I give a speech in the beginning, give some tips with a good etiquette. So, you know, down the stage, tell the appropriate time when questions are going to get asked, asked and answered, and also Make sure you're fine on the seat and not blocking everyone or trying to be you know, sort of, you know, we're nice to people when we're at the same person's events. We all work together. We're all happy people who just want to have fun. So the same when we're in the virtual space. Now, when I'm running events, I have an eye on my model. It says have several tools at hand to be able to run the successful and to make sure I'm in the better. But it's basically one of these host tools here. So when you're at your home space at home, you hit your home button, not now, as you'll leave. And, or in your own space, you'll have these host tools. But there's a selection of several different tools, everything from muting the audience to basically then sending a global message. So if I go all mute at the moment, if I put that down. So if I go send a message, I'm going to say, uh, where are we? Uh, there you go, and everyone's going to get the same message. It's now basically the same. We're halfway through the event, you know, have fun, we're all smiling. Yay. We can also then basically amplify my voice. Now, here is the case of everyone's hearing me at the same volume. When you're walking around a normal space, you can only hear people in me or feel a tongue face. 
but with the amplifier option, you know, everyone here is going to be the same volume. I can use my cameraman, so any recordings are also good. We also have access to a stage blocker if your event is supported, but you can also customize your event now with the event tools, put your own stage blockers in to stop people getting onto or access to special spaces if you need to. And then we have the host panel. Now, the host panel is another wonderful tool which has two different ways of working. So, the first one basically shows me all the people at the event. And from here, basically, I can, either, I can mute all the attendees again. I can amplify an individual person if I want them to suddenly speak up or start talking. Also, I can grant them stage access. So, if I want to invite someone to the stage, go and take a picture, like, hi. And also, if the, if the worst comes to the worst, you can then also kick them and then boot them from the event. That doesn't block them from your event, it simply kicks them out because they're being disruptive. Now, the other feature they have in this is also the partition information panel, which we'll also get to play with later. Now, on the partition patient panel, I can turn on this allow hand raises feature. What this does is then it gives an, a queuing system for people to basically say, right, I want to ask a question, and then step back as if I can go and walk through each and every one of those and say, right, can you ask a question, can you ask a question, which we'll get to play with in a bit. This is great because it also means that the fact that you also get questions in and out easy, like in an event where everyone puts a hand up. You know, there's a system record and just put the hand up when they put the hand up, and then you can basically give them a microphone and amplify their voice so they can speak. And I'm all cavalier trying to jump up on my lap. Hi. So, a few little tips and tricks. So, obviously, when you're running events, you're trying to manage events. Things get a bit dicey at times, especially if you're going to going to go through or practice, you'll get used to it. Make sure he says it's time to practice. That includes both you as the host and also the presenters. So, you know, a day or two before coming the event, try your director's driver, make sure your slides to work, make sure that they all look fine. Practice with the host tools, make sure you know about meeting people or working the way through with them. If you have a microphone on the stage, now I've moved, this space did have one here, I've removed it. Because one thing is the fact that if there's a microphone on stage, anybody who walks past it will have their mic broadcast. You know, it's a microphone at the end of the day. Everyone hears everyone has a microphone. We've all been to that karaoke bar with the one guy who will knock it off. It's eh, fun. But also a case of you could be having a private conversation with someone. If you're stood next to the microphone, everyone can hear you. So just be aware of the microphone and remove it if you don't need it. You can also spot a pointer. I've got a pointer here, which I've just spawned to the scene, so I can go and point around. The real good thing is the fact that I can't laser myself in the eye with it. It's virtual, so it's not going to do anything. Um, and be aware, like any other event, you know, we're all here to have fun and try to encourage good, good practice and good use. And this is a really good immersive environment. So the case of just getting everyone to be kind to everyone. And like I did here, you know, at the beginning of this session, set the ground rules. It's the same as you would be in a, in a personal event, but a bit more expensive because you, you're teaching people how to welcome to the space what they're going to get used to, and how they're going to run. So, as with anything else, let's see this in action. So here I am, here's my, my cameraman, who's, who's invited himself into my little event, and he's going to wave around. So him, I'm an only participant in my little demo meeting, and I'm going to go down, I'm going to actually edit, enter the, edit the, the host tools. So you can see here, all the different host tools are there, so I can mute the audience, I can message everyone, I can set myself to amplify or, or not, and then go into the host panel. So here you can see now I've got two people in, both myself and the other person. And there again, if you can select an individual person, I'm going to mute, get a microphone, make them host, make them a moderator. If all else fails, kick them from the meeting. I've literally had to kick a single person. We can also then enable the hand and raise feature. We'll see this briefly what it looks like. And then my camera will say he wants to ask a question by clicking a button. And that enters him into a queue. But once he's in there, they're giving them the microphone. I can give you the microphone. I can dismiss his question. And then that way can walk through all the, way through, all the way through. And that will list through everyone who has asked. You know, as you can see, you'll see it here shortly. You'll have this raise hand feature. And then that will give you access to what you're running. Aha. So. So, so far, okay, we've created our event, created our space, we've got our event going, and everyone's having fun. But obviously, sometimes you want to be able to record the event, 
or you want to even want to stream your event online as it's been done today so one thing to remember is the fact that all of these different virtual online sites or space with mozilla hubs or others they don't provide today inbuilt recording features so if you want to record the event the thing to do is you need a separate account a separate pc just set up to be able to do a recorder which is my cameraman who just happily sit quietly because i'm not touching him he's still hitting and recording you're going to add this add this different account to your event as a pilot if you want them to get into the event early you also need to give them host access as well default the pilot also has the ability to fly because obviously at the moment no one can fly in the event apart from me so if I can, well, you might be able to place now place him on the ground here in some spaces I've placed him on a booth up in the sky or in another space where you can't really interact with the cameraman. Now once you set that up, you do also then need to on the, on the PC got him. I recommend using the 2D client because we are headset as freaky. And then what you do is you can use software such as uh, OBS or the open broadcaster software or even use the Windows game bar, which has other features or any other stream recording or streaming service that suits your needs. Again, this is completely up to you. Once you've got your camera set up in the room, you're basically going to get it enabled to fly if you need, especially need to put them in a place where you can't get to by walking. And then once your camera runs set up, we've got them in place. So in one event, I've got him here in the screen, just floating in the sky. You've got a nice good view of the stage. I can see what I want to be able to record and do. And then once he's all set in place, I'm going to go into the settings and in the items section and build the Jimmy Cam. And what that basically does, that disables all of the AltSpace UI. So that now you have a clear screen. So where today you've got your settings options and you've got your tools and everything else that will be there. This will clear the screen. So I'll have a nice clear, unfiltered view of the space. I can then go into my recording stuff and make sure I'm recording the right window. Make sure that also very keenly, make sure the audio is coming from the right source and not browsing out. Uh, one interesting thing with the laptop I'm using for recording today, what I can't see, I'm pointing where I can't see it, it's on my desk. Um, I've actually plugged into the headphones, that way the sound is not blaring out and actually you can hear it through my headphones it's on the laptop itself. The sound is not appearing. You can't mute it because you need that sound for the event. For both what you can see, what you can do. And then hit record. And again, good practice run. I've probably done about 15 different test runs with this hardware. And it really didn't have that 30 minutes before the event. I had Windows Update running on it. Yay! Always good fun. Always hot. If you need it, have a, it depends how critical it is to you. So here we are. I've gone back to my event. I'm going to find it. There we go. There's my event. I'm going to go into it. And then what I'm going to do is edit the event. I'm going to add my camera master setup previously into it now that you're adding a role you're using the always username not not like that the actual username and go into the profile settings then i'm going to give them a pen and also it's a good idea to we'll give them a host Let's say earlier the fact that once you if you've got a presentation slide you want to put in the scene and you want to put it there in advance to go into the advanced section you go all the way down to the bottom and then here in this very last option you're around and that will automatically load up the front of your presentation session maybe you're especially doing some present day we are back in space me and the cameraman has a switch for all so he's i'm now the guest and i'm going to go off i'm going to set myself to fly give myself set off nice super power so i can go anywhere because when i say anywhere i do mean anywhere yeah you'll be waiting to the end of the session we'll be questions at the end Okay, and you can literally you come over with me. You can walk, see, you see the bridge in the distance. I could fly over there if I wish. Such good fun. I'm going to position my camera in the scene, make sure everything I can see, what I wanted to see as part of the event, as part of the record. And then I'm going to go into the items, and enable the Jimmy Cam, and that's it. That's my event to record. And at any point in time, I record on my recording system, and off it goes. And that's my event recording or streaming. If someone else is actually to do the recording for you, then you're not looking down where you're doing. So, 
That's the section we've pretty much got to talk to. So we'll, have, we'll go for a question and answer section next. And then you can see what we do now. The sort of final tips and tricks, okay? Uh, again, events is a great thing. You can run it on your own, but I highly recommend get some friends, even if it's just a family member or someone else just to help moderate the events, just to give you a bit of extra tips and tricks. If you need to do recording, you will need a separate machine um, set, up, set up so we can actually use the 2D client and record what you're doing, whether that's audio. Uh, I think one of my colleagues um, is running a podcast now, and he's actually using it. Anything set up is changing podcast into virtual. Sometimes, not all the time. Um, when you start the meeting, give it a few minutes in advance to actually let people mingle, as they would do in a real person event. And also make sure the fact that you're setting the stage. You know, you're telling people how to behave in the event, what they need to do, and how the whole thing is going to run. As well, not critical, but also have a virtual bar afterwards so that you can actually then have a chat and things like that everywhere else. Because obviously, one, like any other in-person event, once the presentation finishes, you know, everyone doesn't leave the building. We all sit around, we all talk, and all play. Um, but one last thing to note, if you do happen to leave after the, after the end, end of the event, so when the event time is finished, you can't get back in. Uh, it does actually say when the host drag you back in. But the event space will stay open until the very last person leaves. So it's something to go around, but um, you know, if someone leaves and wants to get back in, then they may, might message you and they can pull them back into the event and give them the way back in. There's something to be aware of. Uh, I mean, like I said, it's all free, so it doesn't really go there, and the event must keep running until the last buns is out. So a nice little information slide. So come and also, obviously, you all know the Allspace website, because you're here today. I also recommend looking at their blog and straight after, well, I'll say straight after the event at uh, 9 o'clock UK, 8 o'clock UK, I should say, running at 6 to 8, uh, or whichever time that is in your time, go to the Alt Space 101. One, one it is, I was forgetting to look at talk to some of the Alt Space staff and talk to other people who are just learning the Alt Space and want to look around. But the open blog test the software if you're or the Windows game bar, and you'll find me at Simon Darkside J anywhere. Which anywhere, whether it's on Twitter or all around the world. And also, if you really want to, you can also look at my blog of all the different things. So this is one of the events I'm running. I do a lot of different things. Um, we're also we're running future events on both more dedicated sessions on recording and also maybe some developer events about how to build your world and do things. So expect those in coming. So I'm now going to go into my host panel. And I'm going to turn on this, as we've shown earlier. And maybe everyone should now have the raise his hand. So if anyone's got a question, if you want to raise your hand, and I need to bring my tools back up. Oh, there's what we've got a question already. Let's have a look here. Okay, so we've got a question from Woodland. So I'm going to give you microphone access. There we go. Oh, that's a bit of that one. Right. So, uh, one you should be on mute now. Nope. Uh, I don't know if your microphone is working, Woodland. Do you want to ask guys? You use the raise hand feature. Oh, three people doing a dance. Also, two people. Right, okay. Right, so it sounds like your microphone's not working. Let's try that again. Okay, if we're going to try to Woodland, is he still asking a question? All right. Sorry, I'm still not hearing you. So I'm going to try to answer my phone now. I'm just answering another question. So uh, we've got Jordan. Okay, Jordan, Hello. you should have on the microphone. Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Yep. Yep, do you have a question? Yes, I can hear you. Um, uh, I joined this by accident, but I'm kind of interested in it. What's this is about? So this session was about how to actually create your own event and run your own event into oh. the space. That's cool. If you check the, if you check the listing later on, then there will be a recorded event, so you can watch it back later. 
or this is an air in on Friday as well. Okay. We're going to look okay, for that. thank you. Okay, no worries. Uh, okay, so that's Jordan. Okay, uh, well. <laughs> Apologies, he's muddling. Did you want to try again? Okay, we've got a question from Iwando. Oh, that was a skin. Uh, okay. Iwando, uh, you should have the floor. You can hear me? Yeah, you can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I uh, just had a question about when you're creating your your event and you have a box that I saw on, I'm not sure if this was an event, you can, uh, you were reminded of this presentation and how you can add other graphics yep. and everything into that description bar of detail. How do you do that? Okay, so that uses a language called Markup. So if you, if you do a quick Google search about Markup, there's an, and then an interesting site, basically, is the, uh, uh, there's some tricks where basically is that you're writing text and what you do is the images from elsewhere and basically you can forward that. So if you look, if you look at basically a Google search on Markdown, okay. you'll find a quite a few Google posts about teaching you how to do it. So, um, you just do special characters. It's like almost like HTML, but in a short, okay. which can't actually put HTML out onto the website. Okay. But you can do a lot, you can do, um, you can you can do, create bold or italics, you can add images, or rather links, and even the lines if you wish. Most markdown work. It makes it, if you look at the, the web page, the site on the web on the website, you can see that later that out, laid out so nice to go a while. Okay, there. great, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, let's see who's next. Yep. Yeah. Right. Hello? Hi, yes, can you hear me can now? You. Yay! <laughs> All right, I, I have a question about worlds. If you've already yep. created a world, can you use it for an event? Right, that is a very interesting one because when we go through, go through a basic setup of how you can do events and, events and things like that, but if, like me, you want to do a reoccurring space and you actually want to do, multiple, especially if you're doing a series of events, then world is your answer. So what you can do is you can actually go into the website and go to the world page, but then you'll create your own universe. And this is basically just a collection of worlds. Yes. Any world you then create in that, like an event, it looks exactly the same, except there's a few different spaces. If you then create that world, customize how you want, can you then go to create your event, and you go down, you can actually select that world as the template for that event. Absolutely yeah. awesome. Yay. Yep. yep. So one look, one look, other one, one look got you with that though. Okay. So that set that copies the world at the time that you create the event. If you then change your world afterwards, those changes will not go into your events. What you'd have to do is they then change the world back to something else and then slip it back again. And then I did got that it. four different times with this event because I forgot to put the hat in. Um, <laughs> Or I wanted to, or I wanted to tweet or something. So, and also the the other thing, worlds are really good at force. This is just one space. I could, if I went, that had several spaces in that event for that event. That you'd create your own worlds and create a teleport spot wherever you need to take you from there. So you can actually use multiple rooms as part of an event. Let people guide and navigate around. And this can be entry. That is as awesome. One of the nice, nice to see. That is great. Do lots of different things. Oh, so, yay. Yeah. Uh, well, super. Thank you so nice much. Yep. Well, you actually then create your own world. So in Unity, create your own 3, 3D content. Bear in mind, you know, not really complex uh, environments. You know, it has to keep it simple to a degree. We we'll work on the lowest coming into no one's headset, all the way to the all the way up to the level of this tricks and things. But then you can use it just to create your own world and then create, creating your own events. If you use your own world so when you crafted, you can't get featured in alt space. Okay. So you have to yeah. use one of their templates to be featured, which is a, a nice little thing. But sneaky thing. Can use your own featured event and then use a teleport to your world. 
Uh, we do that in some of the other events. So the developer event, if you're interested in building your world, is a fantastic one we're going to um, for learning things. And I'm also going to do some sessions on world building in components. Are, are you doing the 1231? Uh, the, the one in, in about an hour and a half? Which one's that one? Uh, okay. It's World Tours. Ah, no, okay, so that's one of the, the pre-registered events um, where people are showing off the worlds they created. That's not, that's Excellent. Not yeah, because I, okay, I don't work Okay, thank you. For, yep, yep, I don't work for Osprey, so I'm a, kind of didn't say at the beginning, I'm a Microsoft MV. I work with, but I'm not for Microsoft. Um, I work in both the areas of Windows Mixed Reality and also on the Xbox room. I uh, try and Unity books, so I know what we're talking about when I'm actually building Unity content. And there were some open source projects, right? Let's see who else is. We have a few more questions lined up. So thank you, Woodland. Uh, next one is Cassandra. And you unmuted now. Yes. yes. Cassandra? Can you hear me okay right now? Uh -huh, go. Okay, yeah. Two Definitely. quick two quick questions. Sorry if I didn't understand this. Okay. So say I want to come into the if I, if I make a presentation in this room. And I want to do a dry run, and do I need to rent the, not rent the space, but let all space know I want to have access to the room just to do my dry runs and practice? Absolutely not. Anyone who's a host can enter before the event starts. So all you're, all you're really doing is saying you reserve this space, and people can enter at this time. But when you created the event, the space exists. And then if you go in at any time, to make their all persist in that space until the event finishes. Oh, so even like the day before, say if I want to work on my presentation the day before, so I have if you want, access. If you wanted to do it a year before, you could. Oh, okay. Simply creating your spaces and just to do what you like. So, you know, it's there, it's created. Um, the only thing I have yet to mention is the fact that obviously you can change your mind about what theme or space you're using up until the actual day the event starts. Okay. And then it's sort of locked down. So you've got... Lots of time to play. Okay. And the other thing is, you're really calm as uh, everybody's running around <laughs> in front of you and doing things. This just takes practice, I guess, just to ignore all it's, it's the like people it, yeah. doing It's like anything else. I mean, this is why we recommend. So, you know, putting on a device, the start of the event, giving some good etiquette guides for how people should run it, it doesn't help with people who join, who join in late. Um, I have been considering, uh, after a few events now, in putting up a little notice board, just to give people guides, because again, this is a new medium, we're not used to people being virtual, or um, if it's an in-person event, we'd never think of actually wanting to shaking someone's hair and just sitting down, but in VR, it's, so again, it's just good guiding of practice for running an event, and whether it's yourself or whether you're a host, um, if you have moderators, they might actually ask someone who's running around to sit down or move away from one of the spawn locations because there's only two places where people can enter the event. And if someone, everybody sits in that one place, then no one can see. So um, have the moderators help run the event. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. And uh, next up is Rick. Ricardo. Um, Hello. Oh, oh, Ricardo, go Hello. ahead. Yep, can yes. hear you. I have a question about audio. Uh, can yep. you choose maybe one or two persons to have a private conversation inside the room, or is it not possible? No, so all the places, it's a social area. So there's only two modes of conversation. So there's either just in person talking. So only you and people near you can hear, or where we have network, both you and I now have like the megaphone where everybody hears the same, same thing. Wow. But this is like any other real space. You know, if you want to have a private conversation, either go off into another area of space or take them into your home or go to another space where you can talk. So there's lots of different options as like you would in any other physical space. So if you really want to keep, want to keep it private and no one else here, my recognition is just go to your home and then talk have both of you can talk at your home. As long as you're friends with someone, you can they can invite you can invite them in and they can chat to your heart's content and no one can hear you. Okay. Or if you're at an event, just find a quiet space as you would do in real life. Okay. Okay. Let's see who else we've got now. Thank you, Ricardo. 
And now we've got Ben. Ben Cullen? Um, Hi. Ben, you should Can be unmuted. Yeah, it's just if you're creating your own world, because I haven't done that yet. Um, how do you would you bring in like the um, how you put presenter um, slides and everything up at the moment? Like, would you bring that into your world in Unity as an asset? Like, how how would I manage to make a screen kind of like that if I was building my own world? Okay, so a couple of different ways. The actual screen that does the actual presenting, so the actual browser, so. The screen, this is actually several different bits in here. If I move this, you can actually see the stage scene in, in this default template. But the browser has actually shown my content. Now that's placed on top of something. So you can't put a browser in Unity and have it work. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you could design your presentation screen. So if you've seen the presentation event stage, you know, the actual screen itself is just a model. But the browser is then integrated and put, placed into that and an appropriate place, and then the control added. Now, one interesting thing that you want to skip with this is when you build your things in Unity, you can build content, you can build models, you can have some effects, and not have any So, you can build static content from Unity. And then, in both space, either through the developer kit or through using what you're available here, then you can have more interact interactivity. Um, and, fair warning, you have to use TypeScript. Not you, not C sharp. Okay, cool, awesome. Yep, no worries. But uh, yeah, go to go to one of the developer events, um, or look out for one of my future events about actually building content in here for a few extra tips and tricks. Nice. Right, so, okay, we've still got questions coming. So we've got Kojo, and you should be unmuted any minute now. Hi. Um, I saw somebody put their webcam up as the browser screen. Um, and how did you do that? Uh, quite simple. If it's an IP webcam, then you simply browse into it. So if anything you can get to on a browser that you can see on the web, you can then use the browser to then browse it. If I wanted to, I could change this to YouTube right now, and we could all watch cat videos. I wouldn't recommend it, because we'd all be sitting here laughing now instead of watching the presentation. <laughs> Um, right. Almost anything, anything on the web you can do in the browser in not space. Just I would have to one. use like OBS or something to get my to get my webcam on a stream of some sort. That's another way of doing it. So if you've got a way of streaming your web, so if it's not an IP web camera, you want to use your PC web camera, and yes, you'd have to use something like OBS or some kind of stream recorder to stream that out onto somewhere, even YouTube. I mean, if you really want to go in section, you can stream live to YouTube and then have the YouTube live stream placed in your Altspace presentation window. I can imagine that be quite freaky because there is a few seconds delay between what you see on the web and what you see in the screen, but it would have worked. So what's the easy way you said it to get... The, the simplest way is you if you've actually got uh, an IP-enabled webcam or have some... What does that mean in IP? Okay, so... Um, IPs are internet protocol, so basically it means that your camera is broadcasting to the internet. Some security cameras do this, or you can have you know, webcam software on your PC, which does the same thing. And what it means is that I type an address in, which is your IP address, the address of your camera, and that's simply broadcasting out. If you, if you hmm. a Google or okay. IP webcam, you'll find a few different things. So you can have hardware that does it, or software. Or, awesome. throw, throw out all that, or I should say use OBS or some other kind of streaming software to put it out to somewhere else and then capture that. Cool. Um, one more question. So I've had some issues with the browser. I can't see my slides. Yes. Now, this is, this is something I've learned um, to myself. Hopefully everyone can see these slides. Now, what we found after talking to our space and a few other people there is that it can depend on a few things. So if you're router or your computer is blocking things like Google ad tracking or blocking some sites, not everyone will see the content. So it comes down to, if you're having issues with that, either use a different presentation service or in the actual event setup, there's a custom what's called DNS or a name set area where you can actually put in addresses of places where all space will work better. However, Altspace are aware of some of these issues, 
So they're looking at ways to improve their brand so that it works better, effectively. Okay. So stay tuned, in other words. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Right, so next up is Neptune. Um, go Neptune. Uh, Neptune, I think your microphone might not be working. Can't actually hear you. Okay, we'll give Neptune a minute to sort his microphone out. Uh, and so next up is Zay, 420. Uh, hey, 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 can you hear me? Yep, you're flying up there. Hi there. So, uh, what is this? Uh, this was an event on um, how to actually run all the space events. So how uh -oh. you create your own event and run it. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. the event page later, the recording for this will be there if you're interested in knowing how to do that. Alrighty, that, that's what's up. Okay. Okay, next up we got is Frank. Uh, Frank, you should be unmuted now. Hi, um, I apologize, I missed the very first part of it, but um, I was very interested in this and because I've been trying to do it. And I was told that um, the only videos that you can share are on YouTube, but when I came in, you were in the middle of talking about um, that you can even do like a cam. So it sounds like maybe I was misinformed that you can actually put videos like uh, TED Talks, for example, is something I'm very interested in doing a share with. So, um, so yeah. yeah I mean, so, is there, when I'm creating the event, is there a URL that I can plug it in there? It's up to yourself, really. I mean, the browser is an open browser itself, so it can go to almost any service. So, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, um, your own streams, um, or in this case, like the presentation on slides.com, I've got videos embedded inside my presentation on slides.com, so it plays through. As far as I'm aware, there are no restrictions on what you can show. Um, it's just what you can get to via a web browser. Okay, but where do I plug in the URL of what it is that I want to share? So, there we go. Let me just wind back to the slide. Do, 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 do. So in the section about oh, video, camera. So, um, Oh, uh, come on. Ah, I can't seem to get so slow. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Let's see if that catches up. Might have to restart that. Well, this is really yeah, good news, and I appreciate you doing yeah. the uh, doing the presentation on this. You said that uh, you said that this is being recorded, and I can view it uh, later. So maybe I can yep, go so, back and review yep, what so I meant. So the recording will be online later, and I'll, what I'll do is I edit the medi the actual event description and put the URL into the meeting, so you can actually watch it back. But effectively, what the answer question is: um, in most presentation places, especially where it's got a dedicated screen, there's either a browser went Oops. There's either a little browser button on the bottom side, we can actually put the address in, or can you in your alt space toolbar, you've got the browser icon as the top left one. Now you'll bring up the browser in your screen and then you can either broadcast to the screen or, or view it on your own personal. Oh, and I think we lost the last one. Oh, yep, yeah, I think we lost Frank. Okay, and let's try Neptune at the end. Okay, 
Okay, Nick. Hopefully you got your microphone sorted out now. Nope. Okay, so I'm now going to unmute everyone. So you're all free to talk now. There you go, I'll turn that off. There you go, you should all be unmuted for anyone's left, so feel free to now just the the end of the presentation. I got a question if you can hear me. Hey, Simon, do you have a minute? Simon, are you still there? Apologies, everyone. I guess that my quest crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show everything can happen. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's okay. I hope everyone enjoyed the event. As I said, that's sort of the end of the event now. Um, unless anyone's got any questions or any other things you want to answer. And if you want to, I'm actually going to do events one again on Friday at a different time. Uh, but if you want to check back the recording, you can do it. So, have fun, everyone, and enjoy your hats. This is my wizard, Harry. Working? It's thinking about it. Where's my wizard hat? There we go. So, did anyone else have any questions? If you have a minute, I, I wanted to see if we could chat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I saw that you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so I'm Kathy Moya. I, I pinged you on LinkedIn, and and uh, I saw about this event. But I was running my own PGI because I manage uh, 